You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping SmackDown Live from October 24th. Yes. Are you happy now? You know what show it is. You know the date. I remembered. Oh, okay. I wasn't well, We had looking. this problem last week, so, you know. No, and it's not that I didn't know. It's just you don't write it down. It shouldn't be a problem if you know. No, that's not true. <laughs> Are you saying you're being a pain? Yeah, I, I like to I like to nitpick. Ah, oh, okay. Very good. <clears throat> yes. So, yeah. SmackDown. What did you think? It wasn't a bad show. Yeah, I thought it was overall it decent. Wa- um... I wasn't a big fan of the the main event. Not not the match itself, but I would like to see both of those people. Oh yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In the match, mm. we'll, we'll get to that eventually. It's true. But, yeah. So. Um, but yeah. So before they went live, they had a recap of what happened on Raw the previous night with the SmackDown roster invading Raw, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. Then we open the show with uh, Shane McMahon. Apparently, he's been rehabbing for the last two weeks. All of his injuries from his... uh... Hell in a Cell match. Yes. So, uh, yeah, he basically comes out and talks about Survivor Series and uh, how they allowed Raw to utilize AJ. Mm -hmm. And um, how Angle said the SmackDown roster was weak and they weren't going to do anything. Or they were going to lose, I should say. Well, yeah, Yeah. because... SmackDown Live is the superior brand, mm-hmm. apparently. Yep. So basically, that uh, the reason they got done what they did was because they caught the Raw roster by surprise. Mm. And uh, if they try to do the same, uh, Raw It'll will be, be ready. ready. Or SmackDown will be ready, yeah. Yes. So apparently, I guess they had uh, security everywhere. Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> Throughout the night, they panned to emergency well, exits yeah. with no one around. No, but they just showed the exits. Huh? They didn't show anywhere yeah. the doors or anything. They nope. just showed the exit. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what the purpose of that uh, was. Because if anything, you're just saying, we have no one on the doors. Right. We're free to attack. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. So, um, yep. Sami Zayn comes out. Yes. I forget what he said to him right as soon as he came out because he got in the ring. He said, know. "I hope that." Um, or he said, "Like no hard feelings." Yeah, or something no hard like feelings that. Yeah. about uh, <laughs> Hell in a Cell. Shane was like, "Oh, there's hard feelings, all right." Mm-hmm. Um, and yet again, Sammy comes out with his uh, happy-go-lucky, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, e- expressions. Yeah, all, all giggles and laughing. It's a good. Doing. It's a. It's good, different. Yeah, it's it. It is it is nice because it's kind of. It's funny because he's supposed to be perceived as a bad guy, but he's mm-hmm. all so happy. Right. It's kind of like the New Day was. Yeah. Because well, I mean, he just said he, he's basically the same Sammy. He just took control of his destiny. Mm-hmm. That was it. So so that makes sense why he was that way, considering they were really building him up on being this kooky, over-analytic guy that, yeah. you know, put so everything it, under a microscope, basically. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's, a, it's a good change in the mm-hmm. direction of the character. <clears throat> but anyway. Yeah. So um, Sammy says that he wants to be uh, he wants to be in the Survivor Series right. match. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first he says that you know that if Shane was in uh, in GM mode right now and it was competitor Shane that he would lay him out right here, <laughs> which is funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know. Um, anyway, so uh, but yeah, like I said, he wants to be in the match, mm-hmm. and he says that you need to to win to get your opportunity this is the land of opportunities yes so gotta reiterate that he said if you win your match tonight mm-hmm. then you'll be on team smackdown live what? all i have to do is win a match okay i can do that mm-hmm. apparently uh, he's facing randy orton yeah, he was like who, who's my opponent and that's when shane yeah. announced that it was gonna be randy orton yeah so uh so it'll be randy orton versus Sami Zayn later on in the night mm-hmm. the winner i guess becoming a member of team smackdown yes which they didn't really say that at first they just said that if Sammy won, he would be a part of Team SmackDown. I don't think they... I I figured it was implied. It was, yeah, I guess so. Anyway, um, yep. so they cut the commercial to come back, and uh, we have The New Day versus Gable. Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin. Yep. With the Usos on commentary. Yes. And uh, <laughs> to start the match, uh, I guess Michael Cole was doing his Jolly Rancher uh, 
Keep on sucking. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden there was a pause. And I think it was one of the Usos. It was or one by, of the and he was like, what? So I'm guessing he wasn't paying attention. He was not prepared for that. But it was so... They, all night long, they kept pushing the uh, Jolly Rancher thing. But they didn't do it on Raw. So I don't... I don't know. It was weird. Maybe it's SmackDown specifically needs the... I don't know. Maybe Michael Cole has gotten this stuck in his head, so that's why his commentary skills aren't that good. Uh, Keep on sucking. <laughs> no, he's, he's not that bad. No, people, some people don't like him, but I have no problem with him. I mean, I prefer other announcers. Like, I prefer Phillips to him. Well, you know, it's Tom Phillips. You no. know what I mean? Tom Phillips and Corey Graves are the two best announcers in the WWE. And a lot of people don't like Tom Phillips. Which is dumb. But people they're entitled dumb. to their opinion. People are dumb. Yeah, I know that. And you're a person, so you know. Well, you know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so how is how is the new day versus Gable and Benjamin? Um, short, because mm-hmm. I believe the match started and we went right to the picture and picture commercial. So it felt short for <clears throat> sure. Yeah, and um, then because the two K eighteen commercial came on, I was like, man, this commercial is so good. They did such a good job with it. So you and were that paying more me. attention to the commercial. It's than so you. catchy. It's distracting. It's true. Also they do that a lot yeah where they like there was some commercials where they literally just played the 2k18 mm. or commercial breaks where they just played the 2k18 yeah. thing so but uh i'm pretty sure uh gable and benjamin controlled the majority of the match well yeah that's yeah. generally how it's goes. it was just a very odd ending to the match mm. well where um because um gable was the legal man Benjamin was on the apron, and Gable and Xavier Woods were in the ring together, and I'm pretty sure Gable Irish whipped Woods into the rope. Belt Benjamin kicked him in the back. He fell to the ground. Gable picked up the win. It was just a very odd finish. Yeah. Like, they made it seem like it was much more brutal. Than it was? Like, he got kicked in the back of the head or something like that, but he got kicked in the back. There's a chance that it was supposed to be, <clears throat> like, uh, maybe higher up, but it just didn't connect yeah. properly um so so you don't think gable and benjamin versus seth and dean would be a higher quality match no i'm not saying it wouldn't be yeah. i'm just saying that i don't think that that's what they'd be building to yeah i um, guess that's true well but i don't know if they're gonna have them lose to the usos you know i feel like they're not gonna lose dean and seth are gonna win that match regardless no no no, no. Gable and Benjamin when they get their shot. Oh. If it's pre-Survivor Series. Fair enough. Unless they have, like, a DQ finish, but it wouldn't make sense because the Usos are kind of... Yeah, and honestly, it kind of seems like Gable and Benjamin are kind of getting towards the Healy side themselves. Yeah, right. That's what I was saying, yeah. So... And like you said, it's technically almost a face-face team considering the Usos are kind of teetering on that. Yeah, they're 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 certainly not as heel as they were. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah. they. They did say that they made it a point to say that they faced Dean and Seth before, but they weren't the Usos they are now. So. Yeah. So, but I don't know. I, I would imagine that they're going to hold on to titles. Maybe they won't get their title ch- shot until, until after, after Survivor Series. It's yeah. possible. Because we don't even know what uh, pay-per-view is in December. Yeah, but the, well, the SmackDown is this roadblock. Um, oh, I, is I it? just don't know what Raw is. Oh, okay. Um, so <clears throat> that, that would mean... Well, I should say there's not necessarily going to be title matches, but the problem is, like, what are they going to do from here on out? Unless it's strictly Raw versus SmackDown stuff. I don't know. Which would be a little silly. There's only so much you can do. Yeah, You're not going to fill <clears throat> five hours of TV every week. On one story. Yeah. So, um, unless they keep doing matches where they're just, just all throwaway matches, you know? It's possible. It wouldn't be the... Probably first time it probably yeah. wouldn't be the first time at the mm-hmm. very least so, uh, so after the match we uh go backstage and the women's roster or smackdown roster is all talking amongst themselves about survivor series mm-hmm. and then carmella walks up with her leash and she's wondering where ellsworth is yeah that's pretty funny and uh i lost him <clears throat> then daniel bryan walks in and says well uh, you know all the women on the smackdown roster will be in the survivor series match this this year and then lana goes there's six of us and daniel bryan's like oh not you lana i'm sorry <laughs> and on twitter uh rusev apparently it was like angry rusev because he was tweeting all night long about it and he was like how you disrespect my wife like that well he wasn't on the show so no might as well, might as well do something yeah. and then daniel <laughs> says that we need strong leadership 
for our team. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a fatal five way tonight to crown the captain of Team SmackDown, the women. Um, actually, at the beginning of the segment, mm-hmm. or I should say, when Dan O'Brien walked in, um, Carmella goes, I can't find Ellsworth. He's like, Oh, oh I'll send a search party. I'll send out, a right? search party <laughs> right away. What are we going to do? <laughs> As, as if uh, you didn't really seem very interested in the disappearance of James Ellsworth. They were on a ride-along together, though. It's true. <laughs> Which is uh, pretty funny that they did this segment, and it led into the new fashion vibe. Well, I think that was the reason why I know, they... but usually they don't... Usually it's later on in the night, and you're like, oh, look at that. I guess. I, I think the, the it was literally meant to be... The, the beginning of it or yeah to lead right into it yeah but yeah this week we got fashion dogs which mm-hmm. is a parody of reservoir dogs mm-hmm. um <laughs> i liked your text the other night or last night why and wwe got mad over oh, it, uh, yeah. a hand gesture yeah so um <clears throat> the the ascension has uh, james Ellsworth tied up to a chair <laughs> and apparently they had a a gas can in their hand and uh, was it breeze on like well, what is that and he's like oh it's a drink <laughs> So I'm thirsty. Yeah. Starts drinking the thing that's labeled gas. Yeah. So anyway, they're questioning Ellsworth. They're saying they've seen him with the uh, with, with the it, briefcase. Yeah. And, and they uh, said they're going to cut his chin off. Mm-hmm. And then Carmella <laughs> walks in. He's like, oh, there you are. And she's carrying the money in the bank briefcase. Mm-hmm. So uh, they grab it and open it up. And apparently it has James Ellsworth's dirty underwear yeah. inside of it. And then uh, <laughs> Fandango was like Another whipping king. it around. And he like had it on his shoulder. <laughs> He didn't seem to be too uh, too worried about no. it. No, and so uh, basically they said, oh, this case is solved, and then the Ascension's like, you guys haven't solved anything. <laughs> you still haven't solved the 2B, which is obviously the Bludgeon Brothers. And then uh, uh, Breeze is like, there's yeah. no B in Brothers. It's like, oh, it's silent or something like yeah, that. So there must be a silent B. Yeah, so apparently next week we're going to get Stranger Things. Yes. So And they use literally because... the graphic from Stranger Things, mm-hmm. except for they add an the ER. ER. Yeah. The, the, that's at that point that's when i t- texted yeah, yeah. it was good this was a good segment because they're utilizing more people yeah and i love how the uh, intro started where they were walking in the parking lot and the ascension was right behind them yeah well they really <laughs> want to be friends it's true um but yeah it, it's good that they can incorporate other people into it as well mm-hmm. just because like carmel and james allsworth completely unrelated right. to any anything and they're just <laughs> involved in it but it was so good yeah yeah um whoever's doing the writing for this is doing a good job it's true so um i noticed several john cena pictures on the Mm. wall it was like the pink guy the orange guy the white white guy and then there was one other picture i think there was bushwhacker luke or something like that yeah because it was his birthday i think maybe well no it it wasn't luke was it butch no no, i think yeah i think so yeah I know. What, I think it was a B name. Yeah. So that would make sense. Yeah, but yeah, we didn't see much because I think it was most of it, it was hidden behind them. Well, yeah, because there there was four of them on yeah. screen, so there wasn't mm-hmm. a whole lot of room. But uh, yeah, no, it was a good segment overall. Mm-hmm. That was one of my favorite ones in the recent times. Well, yeah, they've kind of recently been a little less mm-hmm. good. Yeah, I guess. But like I guess I think we said incorporating more characters into it makes it a little more. Well, yeah, it interesting. Helps. Yeah, it, it adds to mm-hmm. the to the segment. Yeah. <clears throat> so, all right. So uh, up next, we have a uh, Daniel Bryan and Shane backstage mm-hmm. segment. Yep. So apparently, Daniel Bryan had no idea they were invading Raw. Yes, it was uh, Shane's executive decision mm-hmm. to do that, which is his job or in his job description, right? Yes, he has to make the tough calls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And- um. But yeah, Daniel Bryan is not happy about it. Nope. Um, and he said that that's not the way we do things on SmackDown Live. Right. Yeah. So, yep. I guess there's a little uh, animosity between the two of them, where they'll be built. Yeah, a little, a little bit of a uh, little bit of tension. Mm-hmm. All right. So, all right. Well, never mind. Well, I'll talk about it when we get get to it. All right. All right. So, uh, up next, we had a rematch from last week that we were all dying to see: Baron Corbin versus Sin Cara. And apparently he's using the uh, trampoline now too. I didn't even that. Yeah, yeah, he jumped into the ring too. Well, they they had the trampoline there already. Yes, it's true. Because Kalisto has the match at two hundred five left. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah. But yeah, this was a uh, 
another short match that didn't make a whole lot of sense. It's true. Uh, so the it, second week in a row that Baron Corbin lost to Sin Cara. Yeah. This week, losing by disqualification. Yeah, because he was, like, beating him down in the corner. Mm -hmm. And then the ref, he ignored the ref's five count, and he said, I'm not taking any of this crap. Rung the bell. Yeah. Because the ref, while he's still beating him up after the bell rang, he's like, I already counted a five. You got to (laughs) stop. Get off, Baron. Get off. I counted a five already. Yeah. Referees are so dumb. (laughs) It's, It's, it's part of their gimmick i guess that's true yeah uh and then uh another much anticipated match afterward was oh uh, yeah aj styles versus sunil singh yeah so before the match they had a recap of what Heyman and lesnar had mm. said uh, the night before or so just Heyman. before but. we get into this i saw online i don't know if it was a meme or something like that but it was a picture of Jinder and the Singh brothers in the ring, and they were laughing at Brock on screen with one of his, you know, pink faces and his eyes and everything. I was like, that's what could have happened tonight. But I'm glad it didn't. It's true. No need to go that route I, again. Like I said, I kind of expected Lesnar and Heyman to just, you know, laugh off and ignore the challenge. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, you know, that would have made more sense logically. <clears throat> Yep. But then again, Lesnar eating Jinder alive would be good, too. Not going to happen. It's going to happen. It's not going to happen. It has to happen. It's not going to happen. It has to happen. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Why? Why does it have to happen? Because it makes no sense to take the guy they're booking as the most dominant person in the company Mm -hmm. and have him lose to a guy that just shouldn't be there. (laughs) It's just true. Nah. Nope. Do you, do you, how many victories has Jinder had that he's not supposed to have? All so, of them. <laughs> exactly. All of them. What would, what would you think would make them stop it? Could you imagine him going into India after beating Brock Lesnar? I hate this company. It's so <laughs> dumb. You love them. There's no cohesion. Well, duh. So if there was, there would be no reason for any of this. I guess that's true. Um, but yeah, he basically... Uh, Mahal cuts a promo before the match and mm-hmm. uh, says that... He's the most powerful man in WWE. Yes. Uh-huh. He's the most powerful and influential man yes, or something like that's that. That's right. And uh and then he says he's going to be or he is Brock nope. Lesnar's worst nightmare. Yeah. Which is not true because I would imagine there's a lot of things that are Lesnar's worst mm-hmm. nightmare. And then he called Paul Heyman a walrus, I believe, right? Yes, that was that, that was, was pretty funny. funny. Yeah. So But at least I He mean, said something mean that wasn't horribly offensive. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess not. It's not. It, well, it's a. It's, it's only offensive. offensive to one person. Yeah, that's so true. It, it's at least directed specifically where you're not making fun of an entire country, <laughs> right? That makes sense. I guess that's true. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I, I think he's gonna win, and I hope he does. He's not gonna win. But uh, but right after he cuts the promo, the referee says, "I'm sick of your crap. Get out of here." Sends him to the back. Jinder Mahal, that is. Oh yeah. And then, um, so AJ... Well, AJ had come out while they were talking. Oh, that's right. Yeah, well, he interrupted him, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so the match starts, and apparently uh, Samir was still outside the ring. Mm -hmm. And so I think AJ threw Sunil down, and then Samir got on on the rope. AJ hits Samir, he falls down, and then he locks in the calf crusher on Sunil, and that was the match. Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't expect an actual competitive match. No, no, no. I was like, oh, AJ can get a five-star match out of these guys, too. Didn't even give it time. Well, obviously not going to. Yeah. This is a hell of a way to kill time, though. <sighs> yeah, just I have guess so. Just have him face his lackeys. Yeah. This way you don't have to actually, like, give away a match, technically. Oh, yeah. Well, it's perfect for building... Yeah, killing time, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like you said, for the whole gender AJ feud. Yeah. Because there's no, okay, well, we had the match, so what do we do now? Right. It's just, okay, we're building to it. Mm-hmm. Um... So uh, up next, we have uh, Sammy Zayn backstage. Yeah, was he was taping up his arms or something. Yeah, he was like getting that. ready for his match, mm-hmm. and uh, Kevin Owens walks up, and he says uh, that he has a qualifying match next week against Shinsuke to be on Team... Uh... SmackDown? Yes, Team SmackDown Live. <laughs> I don't know why I was having trouble with that. I think um, I was trying to think of the pay-per-view name. Oh, okay. Um, All right, so question. What? Uh, we, we're probably going to assume that Shinsuke is going to win this Absolutely. match. Absolutely. Um, now... I kind of expected that 
Angle will be on Team Raw, and Shane will be on Team SmackDown. It, it probably will lead to that. Or would they do some sort of tag match with Sammy and Kevin versus Shane and a, a partner? Mm -mm. But it wouldn't make sense because it's all brand first brand. There know? will to be no... Unless they say no, that. No, because there's, there's the two elimination... Right five uh way matches mm -hmm. there's two of those right. so those are going to take a decent amount right of time. but well i don't know what if both sammy and kevin are both off the team you would assume they would have to play a role in this pay-per-view that is true and i guess it's not like they're going to pick a fight with someone from raw right so they're going to beat up well i guess anderson can always take another pin <laughs> that, well obviously that's not going to be the case i don't know I'm surprised it's, they didn't put them on the team. Yeah, that's what I I, I... I honestly figured that maybe they'll get... Oh, Sammy would get, like, Ty. Yeah. Because I remember after the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view that AJ had said that if Shane needed help against these two, he would be on his side. Mm -hmm. So, which would have indicated that, hey, maybe there's going to be a tag match between the four of them. Yeah. But I would put Wait. money on it that AJ is going to be on Team SmackDown. Yeah, it's probably going to be AJ... Maybe Shane, obviously Randy. Unless you have Sammy and Kevin cause them to lose. Yeah, that could have them They'd involved in Shane match. over, which would lead to a match maybe at uh, what, uh, Roadblock. Well, at the very least, that would continue the right. story. Yeah. Yeah, because I can't really think of a Unless whole lot AJ's of... Unless AJ's probably going to fight Jinder at Roadblock. And, yeah, he's definitely fighting Jinder at Roadblock. There's not going to be a... I don't see any tag matches yeah. unless he teams like <clears throat> Orton or something. Yeah um but that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense anyway no i don't know it's just interesting they got too much going on here to yeah like i said i honestly figured that uh owens and sam would both be right on team them Smackdown. and shane it would have made sense yeah because that's what they did last year they and had people have... who were in feuds with each other yeah. ha on the same team it made it interesting mm -hmm. dean was and feuding AJ. with uh, aj and the shield put him through a table yeah, and Roman was feuding, or Roman or Seth was feuding with Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they were both on Team yep. Raw. And uh, Braun Strowman was also on Team Raw. Maybe he was feuding with Roman at the time? No, this was before. I know it was too early, but I, I know Strowman was in the mix. He was. Was he? Yeah. This was before we kind of knew what we had with Strowman. I guess so. Because we weren't sure yeah. how he was going to do. Right. And then he ended up. Yeah, because that's right, because Sheen took the spot that Corbin was originally supposed to have. Yeah. But, um, but moving yeah. on. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we go backstage, and Daniel Bryan's standing there, and Jinder comes and bum rushes him, and uh, he says, you're going to do something about this. And it's like, no, you need to do something about this. Okay, so next week, Samir Singh will fight AJ. So we're going to uh, continue it. I don't know why they do this. Well, we know why they do this, but it's just... It is weird. Yeah. And then uh, up next, we got the women's fatal five-way mm -hmm. to de determine the captain, I guess, of Team Women's SmackDown. That's Smackdown exactly women's what whatever. Did. So most of this match took place outside of the ring, right? Well, that's, that's the way you got to do it. It makes the match more interesting. Yeah. I think it was Tamina looking strong on the outside, right? Well, for the most part, in any match she's been in that's not a singles match, she's yeah. looked pretty good. Yeah. And, or at least dominant. Mm -hmm. So I still think they're planning on some kind of push for her eventually. With well, they got to do it soon. She ain't getting younger. I guess, but you know, it's not like she's got a highly physical move. That's true. Set. So as long as she can lift people up, she should be all right. That's true. So so did Charlotte get knocked into the crowd? I right? think so. Yeah, uh, that sounds familiar. Maybe Tamina knocked her into the crowd, and then. I don't remember because I know Lana got involved too. Because mm -hmm. I think she hit Charlotte from behind, and that's when they were all brawled to the outside, and the action went back into the ring, and Carmella was facing Becky, or was she facing Naomi? Um, I don't remember. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, regardless, yeah, Becky Becky ends up making Carmella tap out mm -hmm. to the disarmor. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I think she was fighting with Becky because Becky kept kicking out, and then Becky reversed it into the disarmor, mm -hmm. and that was it. 
Yeah, that was, uh, I'm glad to see Becky actually getting some sort of nod or her recognition, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, well, she is she is one of the best women competitors in the, in the company, so. Yep. <clears throat> Definitely deserves it. It's just she hasn't been in the right, not necessarily the right place, obviously, but it just hasn't. They just don't have anything for her, basically. Yeah. They've been trying to build up other characters, and Becky's just been let, uh, cast aside because... They don't she, need to do that for her. Well, it's 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 she's too good for her own good. I guess that's that's a good point. Yeah, because there's no need to build her up because she's already seen as the most I guess yeah. the most competitive. Yeah, versatile. Yeah. Whatever. So you yeah. can't put her against the champion because she's just gonna make the champion look bad. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of true. Yeah. Kind of a tough spot. A little bit. All right, so uh, up next, we had another Bludgeon Brothers promo. Yes. Are, was... These are too long and too... Nine Meaningless? Well, yeah, it's... It's just... I just feel like it has no spot today. Yeah, it's it's absolutely one of those... We've built... Like, I, this is my job, but I'm a wrestler. I'm a mm-hmm. wrestler, too, kind of promo. Yeah, because they don't even look like they're uh, really into it, to be no. honest. Oh, no, they don't care. No. Well, at it's this point... It's such they, a it's just, shame. Oh, I know. But they just had absolutely nothing. No. So, they just might as well put the Wyatts back together. No. Just make Bray go away. Have Luke, you know. How are we going to make him go away? Fire him. I guess that's true. Um, and then have Luke just come out you with his dirty him. He's t-shirt. End up in Impact. That's fine. <laughs> I don't care. Final deletion part two. That's fine. So you think Sister Abigail was one that spread the meningitis around? <laughs> that would make sense. <laughs> it's not like possible. It was uh, dirty enough. Oh man. Anyway. Yeah. Let's uh let's move on. Yep. Renee Young interviews Dolph Ziggler. Yep. Unfortunately he wasn't left at Raw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh he uh he, I don't know. He was going on about catchphrases, and then he said, "If you smell right." Oh yeah, he kept on chain. Yeah, he yeah. kept on doing a, f- a few catchphrases. Yep. And then he was talking about entrances. Then he said, "How about or no?" And then he said, "How about this catchphrase? I told you so. I exposed Bobby Roode to be the fraud that he is, mm. and so on and so forth." Yeah. And then and, yeah, because he beat him last week. Yes. And Bobby Roode walks up. Good, because uh, you said that he like taught him a lesson and showed that he was right. Right. Even though he beat him once after Bobby beat him. Yeah. So it's not like he beat him twice, no. yeah. which is funny. And then, yeah, because then Bobby Roode comes up and Dolph's like, just because last night we were together on the same team doesn't mean that I like you or no, something No, he like said, that. it doesn't mean that we're friends. friends. That's what he said. Okay. And then Dolph said, I would never use the F word. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So... um. So then uh, Bobby Roode challenges him to a match, and then Dolph keeps rambling about stuff, and he starts going about two wins or something like that. And then It's like, two wins? That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. How about we have a two out of three falls match next week? And yeah. Bobby's like, that sounds glorious. Oh, yeah. he, he didn't really say that. But... I thought he did say that. No, oh, what he, he said, said it's gonna, was it's going... Next week's going to be glorious, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I don't I... know how I feel about this. The feud continuing? A two out of three falls match. Just because... They don't seem to work well together in the ring, and I don't. I'm, and it's not a, not discrediting either of them. Their styles are just. They have to kill time before Survivor Series. Yeah, I realize that. I guess I'm never just gonna get what I want. No, it's true because it's a very, it's a very formulaic way that they go about doing yeah, things. Yeah, I know. It's okay. We need to kill time, so we need to try to figure out what nonsense we can put on TV to kill said time. Mm-hmm. That's it. That yeah. is all. Yeah, we had a lot of people missing from this show. Um, well, Shinsuke wasn't there. Shinsuke, Rusev, Rusev. Ty. Um, well, Rusev and Ty are like never on SmackDown. Okay, fair enough. All right, maybe there wasn't that many people missing. Luke Harper and Eric Rowan were there. I guess so. The Ascension was there. Yes, they were. The Fashion Police were there. Mm-hmm. The clones weren't. The clones haven't been on TV in months. <laughs> I know. I don't even know if they They're still work to be, for the yeah, company. They, I think uh, Primo or whoever it was, Epico. Mm-hmm. They're, sure. they're One of them, whoever was injured, is supposed to be back soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Anyway. Yep. Um. So uh, up, or, yeah, that up brought next. us to the main event. Yeah. So uh, we got Sami Zayn versus Randy Orton. Yeah. Winner is in 
the elimination match. Yes. Um, this is a good match. Uh, well, yeah, the, it it brought out more in Sammy than you normally Well, yeah, see. you got a lot of comedic uh, relief, too, from Sammy. Mm-hmm. With, uh, I think him and Orton were tied up in the corner, and uh, Sammy kind of went like that on Orton's chest and then backed up and did yeah. some goofy stuff. He did not like that. No. And then we got this spot where uh, Sammy dives through the uh, first and second turnbuckle and yeah. hits the DDT on the outside. That was always a good spot to see. Mm-hmm. Orton went for the draping DDT a couple times. Yeah, he? he was not successful earlier on. Yeah. And but <laughs> toward the end of the match, he did hit him. And they also went onto the announce table, right? Uh, He threw Threw, him onto the announce table. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, anyway, toward the end of the match, uh, Sammy went for the hoover kick, and Orton dodged it, got over the side, and then set up Sammy for the draping DDT, hit that, and then Owens came running out. (laughs) He distracts Orton. Sammy tries to roll him up. Two count. Orton gets up on the apron. I'm sorry. uh, Owens gets up on the apron. Distracts the referee. Orton hits the low blow this yeah, time. That was definitely funny. And RKO and wins. Well, certainly not out of nowhere. No. Saw that coming. Yeah. So uh so yeah. It was uh it's definitely an entertaining match. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um, it's nice to see the spotlight on Sami Zayn. It's true. Um a little it. surprising that there was no retaliation from Raw. I, I think they're going to... Well, I mean, if they build up the storyline and be like, oh, we were recovering, and then like you had said earlier. Yeah. Well, my my thought was maybe Kurt Angle should go out on Raw um, next week and say that the reason why they didn't strike back is because of one of the three eyes, integrity. And then the following, or the next night, they should have Raw attack SmackDown, and then the mm-hmm. next, or even that night, maybe say that this time he's using the other two eyes, intensity and uh, intelligence. intelligence. Yep. Tricking them into thinking yeah. that uh, they were safe, but they mm-hmm. weren't. It's true. So that, that would be an interesting way to tell the story. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, they didn't do anything, at least this week. So. No. So then after the match, there's still a couple minutes. Yeah. And uh, we get Shane and Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan's like, well, I'm glad that Raw didn't show up. <laughs> but he's like, they will, and you better be prepared. It's in your job description. <laughs> yeah, they've been a little, a little specific about details of jobs. Yeah, I don't know what that's all right. about, but whatever. Yeah, not not a terrible SmackDown, but no, not. again, not not much going on because there's only one big storyline. That's it. Yeah. So, and uh, but yeah, yeah. We'll whatever. It's interesting to see how things progress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the the blow off won't be for a while. So. No. That's for sure. We just have to be patient. I guess so. So uh, that was our SmackDown review. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.